Hello everyone, my name is Amber. Welcome to my channel, Amber Reads Romance. Today I am finally getting this vlog started. Um, I am trying to go through Raina Kent's backlist and I have had this duet on my TBR for two months now. So I am finally getting to it. Honestly, I haven't been up to vlogging lately. Um, I, if you follow me, you know, you might have heard me mention that I've had a lot of dental work getting done. So I've had a lot of pain and the last thing I really wanted to do was vlog at the time. So I just kind of kept putting it off. But I am finally starting the Rena Kent duet. Um, hold on. What is the first one called? I think it was... Reign of a King, and then I think the next one was like Rise of a Queen. I might have that totally wrong right now off the top of my head, um, but I am going to read this duet, and then we'll see what I think. I already started it today, um, so I'm about 35% through, and I am finding it interesting. So, I was kind of interested about this duet because this is Aiden's father, Jonathan King, um, Aiden, I love him, um, from the previous series, the Royal Elites, I believe it's called. He's kind of a psycho. He's pretty intimidating, crazy dude, but his father was even worse. Like he was kind of like the villain in that story a little bit. Um, he does not have a great relationship with Aiden. He's a very ruthless businessman. He's, um, pretty dangerous and, you know, there's a lot going on in that series that's revealed about like both the heroine and the hero's fathers and how ruthless and they like hated each other. So I was interested to see what's Jonathan King's really like romance going to be about. And in this we have um, Aurora um, and she is actually the little sister, like half sister to his wife who passed away like many years ago. And he's only met her, I think like once or twice, like when she was like seven. So, um, but she ends up having the kind of being in hiding not fully hiding but she changed her name and for reasons I think her father might have been a serial killer or something because it's barely mentioned um but I think something really tragic happened in her past and so she's kind of like hidden her identity and so she um actually has it a, a business she I think designs like watches and it's like a passionate thing for her because her sister gave her the first watch and like they had a special relationship and so she her business is in bad straits because their accountant like stole money from them and so they need to get investors now it's her and her like best friend and they've been doing this since she was graduated like they left college, they've had this business, but now it's in danger. And so she needs help. So she goes to the heroine's father that happens to be Jonathan King's enemy. Like she shows up at Aiden, she gets an invite to Aiden's wedding. So Aiden is getting married finally. And so she kind of shows up there and Jonathan recognizes her immediately, but like recognizes her because she looks like exactly like his wife who died. And his wife had died, like, under kind of, like, suspicious circumstances. It made it look like she was, had a suit, like, um, committed suicide or something like that. But she's very suspicious and basically kind of blames Jonathan. And so she did not want him to recognize her, and he does. And so he's like, you don't get to go to him for help, especially since he hates, you know, um, Elsa's father, like, their enemies. So she ends up going, still going to the Elsa's father for help and he's going to help invest in her company to save it. And he ends up, Jonathan shows up and is like, I bought the company. I bought the remaining shares from these other people. So, you know, this company's mine now. Anyway, sorry. Um, so he's like, this company is mine now and I own your ass and what I want is you. Um, so she ends up coming to an agreement with him that like she wanted a time limit on this. And so it's going to be like six months of being his and whatever he doing, whatever he wants. And she kind of shows up at his place. She just like takes off her dress and she's like, let's get this over with. And he's like pissed. He's like, you're 10 minutes late. So you're going to pay for that. 
and get your clothes back on. I don't need a whore. So, like, he makes her eat, and then he, like, makes her get on his lap bent over so that he can give her a spanking. And she's, like, not even concerned about giving her body to him because she's never been able to even get wet or enjoy sex or ever have an orgasm. She feels, like, pretty broken that way. Her therapist had assumed it had to do with, like, being raped, but she never was. So, it's something in her past. And so, she just isn't even concerned. But... Jonathan gives her a pretty hard spanking and she starts to get wet and she's enjoying it. And so he also fingers her and gets her off and it's her first orgasm. So I feel like this is going to be a lot of BDSM and he basically tells her like you need pain to get off and I can give that to you. So should be interesting. So it's an interesting setup so far. We'll see how it goes. Um, Jonathan is pretty intimidating, creep, scary guy. So Anyways, I need to head back into work and I have to work overtime today. So hopefully I'll be able to sneak in some more reading today so I can finish this. Um, but I will check back in with you guys in a bit. Hey guys, so I am at work again, <laughs> checking in in my car. Um, I ended up finishing the book last night. Wasn't able to read a ton at work, and honestly, these books aren't too long. I think they're less than 300 pages for the each book. So, I mean, not a ton to really give constant updates on this vlog. So, I will just give you kind of my thoughts on the first book. Uh, I'm starting the second book now at work, um, if I have time to read today. But, um... I enjoyed it. I think it was interesting, but it really isn't a full story because it is a duet. Um, a lot. I don't know why she didn't just make this one big book because it seems like it just needed to be one book, but whatever. Um, I still enjoyed it. Uh, Jonathan is a pretty alpha, um, cold, cut off kind of hero. And he... There's a lot of secrets still in play here, so we don't know a ton, but, um, you know, she has a lot of bad history with her father was a serial killer. She really loved her father. Her father supposedly had an affair with, um, I think her name is Alicia, which was Jonathan's wife's, um, mother. And so, but the mother didn't want her and she basically was left with the father. So she actually loved her father. He would call her his muse and he, they had like an interesting relationship and she actually followed him one day and kind of caught him with a dead body that he was dragging out. He had like duct tape all over the woman's face. And so she freaks out and kind of goes on the run, like runs away on her bike he didn't really see her, but he figures out, he calls her later and is like, you saw me, didn't you? Like, we'll talk about this later. So her father seems pretty creepy. And he, um, so she actually tries to call Alicia because her and Alicia kind of had like a secret relationship. They would kind of hang out. She can never really go over to Alicia's or anything, but she ends up going, um, calling her and she can't get a hold of her. And so Alicia had given her Jonathan's number as like an emergencies only life or death situation, which this pretty much is. So she does call Jonathan and he blatantly just says, oh yeah, she's dead. And he's like, you need to um, basically come with me or call me and we'll figure things out. And he kind of just like hangs up on her. So she finds out that her sister is dead the same day that her father was like a serial killer and she's just freaking out. So she ends up going to the police and turning her dad in. And so she had a lot of guilt over that because she like loved her father, but obviously he was messed up. So, and she kind of got put into witness protection at one point, but kind of ran away from that because she didn't really trust them. And so that's why she created her a whole new identity and tried to stay kind of in hiding. And her and Jonathan, meanwhile, are having this um, kind of like a kinky BDSM situation. She really enjoys getting spanked. And he's able to get her off. She's never been wet or had orgasms or anything like that. Um, so 
they have an interesting relationship. He's very controlling. He wants her, if she's late, she gets punished. She kind of pushes. She gets a little bratty just because she likes the punishments. Um, and he's very um, controlling and obsessive over her. She wants to try and get to know Aiden. Um, that's the other thing is um, that Aiden is like, <laughs> was Jonathan's son and he's very hateful towards her. Like, I didn't even know you existed. You're off. You're after something. He's like called her a whore. Um, meanwhile, she's trying to kind of wants to build a relationship. She has a lot of guilt for kind of like leaving him behind and not ever reaching out. Um, and so it's a complicated thing. Elsa's trying to bridge the gap between them and being sweet. So it's an interesting situation. Meanwhile, all of this is happening and she is living with Jonathan and all that kind of stuff, but she continues to get these video messages set, delivered, dropped off at her old place of, um, basically her sister, like confessing things, but it's only giving her little snippets. So you're getting those throughout the book. And at the very end, we kind of get one where the sister was like saying, you know, my, um, Jonathan's trying to kill me. He's poisoning my food, blah, blah, blah. She sounds pretty crazy. And if you do read, if you have read the Royal Elite series, we know that Ethan and Jonathan as rivals, they did these weird games with each other and they both like married, like kind of like a crazy woman. I have no idea why you would do that and how that would be a game. But so we know Alicia, I think she's probably has severe depression and anxiety and issues like that. So I don't know if we can really believe her that he was drugging her, but at that same time, she had also, um, the, her, uh, sorry, her father came out on the news and was like, oh, I was trying to keep my daughter safe or whatever, but now I'm coming out and speaking out. And so now everyone's going to know her as his father again. I mean, as his daughter again. And there's this the thing is that happened is she got totally attacked by like the victims and their families and they blamed her. And so she had seen this one victim, like, uh, the victim's little sister is all grown up now. So when she like leaves the building, the news is on saying, he's saying stuff about his daughter. She kind of runs out, runs into that girl and she just starts like beating the crap out of her and like freaking out and like bringing my mom back. It's kind of crazy to me that they're going to blame her for things her father did. It's obvious she never did anything, had anything to do with it. But anyways, um, so she kind of freaks out. And then also when um, she listens to that last message, she's like, well, I need to go on the run. I need to get away. So that's kind of where it left off in the book. So I think it's okay. It wasn't really that great because it's just the first part of the duet. So I might give it like four stars. But um, I'm good. I got to head back into work. I'm probably not giving the best update on this, um, but I will... Uh, probably check in maybe later today, probably after work, um, and see how far I get in the second book, but it should be interesting. I'm hoping the second book is a lot better because it's going to, you know, tell the full story. So I'm having high hopes that the second book will be good. I do enjoy Jonathan. He's very alpha and she's trying to also work it so that like she can sleep in bed with him. So she's able to kind of, um, I don't know. She's able to talk him into things or she'll take extra punishments where he F's her face so that he'll sleep with her at night. I don't know. It's weird. And he's like, no woman has ever slept with me. So he's very cut off and all of that, but I enjoyed it. I think it's a solid four star read and then we'll see how the second book goes. All right. I'll check in with you guys in a bit. Hey guys, so actually I didn't get to really read at work yesterday. I had like no time um, to read my book. So I did get about 50% through the second book in this duet, which is Rise of a Queen. Is that it? Yes, Rise of a Queen. And I'm about 50% through and I'm liking this one a lot more. I mean, I liked the last one. It was a decent book, but I mean, it's leaving off a lot of things. There's a lot of, you know, we don't know what's going on. It's not really a full story because it's a duet. 
Um, but I'm really enjoying this one. This picks up right off, right after the last book. So at the last book, Aurora had basically kind of went on the run again because her father came out on the news and was kind of saying she was like contributed and was his like, you know, they were worked together when he killed all those people kind of as his revenge against her. And so she freaks out. And then she also gets that recording from her sister saying that Jonathan was trying to kill her and he was poisoning her like food and everything like that. And so she kind of goes on the run. Jonathan, um, of course, finds out about the father and this, and he he's able to track her down. She had basically went to the old cottage that her father, you know, basically had buried the eight bodies at. And she, um, you know, goes there and she's like kind of saying goodbye, like sorry to all the victims, the little graves. Um, in the past, she had gone there also, um, like after the crime scene was taken care of. She was kind of going to be put in witness protection, going to all the court proceedings. And she had gone there to kind of, you know, look at the house and look at what was going on and kind of say, you know, apologize to these people. And she ended up getting attacked and stabbed by a guy, um, a masked guy. And she was like, fell into the grave and everything. And so she ended up having it like patch herself up. She didn't trust the police because the police kind of thought she might have been involved too, which is kind of crazy. She was 16 years old. Do you think she was being a serial killer with her dad? And, and the other thing that I found kind of ridiculous is that her dad is up for parole lot option. I don't know any serial killers where the bodies were actually found on their property get a chance at parole. Like, that just, I don't know, maybe, I don't know the justice system in the UK. Maybe that's a possibility. But here in the United States, serial killers are not getting out. Like, they're dying in prison. So I don't really get that. But again, it's just a book. So I just have to look past that kind of, it's just a little ridiculous. But, so her dad's like up for parole. So she goes back to that place and she gets attacked again there. Um, but luckily Jonathan finds her and gets there in time. They chase down the guy. They lost him. And he kind of basically takes her back home. She is basically fighting him, but like not telling him why she, her whole attitude towards him has changed because now she thinks he killed her sister. And so he kind of like locks her up in her room. He does a lot of caretaking because she has all these wounds and she keeps opening up the wounds in her hands because she's like fighting him. She tries to escape out the window. It's just a lot. And he's just fed up. And so finally she kind of talks about the recordings and everything. And um, he can't find these recordings. They're not where they were left. The guy that was, they were being left at her old building and the guy that was like at the front desk there basically said he never gave her any, any packages. And so now they think she might be kind of like going crazy, just kind of like her sister was because you find out that her sister was basically her, like a ghost was after her and she would hear him and think that he's after her and was poisoning her or like things like that. So I kind of feel like the same guy might be fucking with her head as well and messing with her um, to make her seem crazy. But her and Jonathan basically, you know, kind of mend everything and they start to like they sleep in bed together every night and they start to really connect. She actually goes to Aiden's place, his sons, to kind of ask him about the mother because she never knew her sister had mental disabilities or depression or, you know, was hallucinating. And so she goes to kind of find out more and him, her and Aiden and Elsa have like this dinner together. Jonathan shows up. And it's really cool because Aiden's kind of like warming up to her and Elsa's helping him do that. And I just love seeing Elsa and Aiden as like this cute little married couple. He's still very possessive. And Jonathan is very possessive over her. Um, I love the way how alpha he is and how like he just really is like psycho obsessive over Aurora. So, so far it's really good, um, but her dad is coming out more saying that she, um, you know, is responsible for a lot of the deaths. So now they're kind of like opening the investigation again and he's basically outing her, like they're going to out who she really is. So Jonathan freaks out and he's like, we're getting you out of here so that they can't arrest you. 
Um, so he basically flies her to his private island. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm really liking the uh, build of their relationship and how doting Jonathan is when he's never been like that. He's a very cold and like psychopath kind of personality. So it's really cool to see that come out of him. So I'm enjoying this a little bit more. Um, I think it's an interesting read. I just think it could honestly been one book. We didn't have to split it into two, but that's kind of what the authors do nowadays now. So I'm definitely enjoying it. Love seeing Aiden, love seeing Elsa. Um, so I will check back in with you guys once I finish the book. Hey guys, so um, funny thing. I'm jumping into this vlog after I'm editing here because as I was editing this <laughs> vlog, I could not find the last clip with my final check-in anywhere. It's, it's a mess, you guys, but I... Thought I put it on my cloud. It was not there. I looked everywhere, couldn't find it. So I must have accidentally, you know, deleted it. So I do apologize. You're not going to get as like detailed as a closing here, but I do want to get these Rena Kent's um, vlogs up because I really want to do a vlog for the entire thing. So I will just kind of give you my like final thoughts on this duet. So with Rise of a Queen, I think that's what it's called. Um, I really liked this book a lot more than the first one. The first one was decent, but again, it was like a first part of a full book. Um, I honestly think that this could have been one book and it would have been perfect, but that's fine. Um, Jonathan King um, really steps up. He's very like alpha and dominant, but all in with Aurora. Um, she goes through a lot and, you know, he doesn't abandon her. He steps up to the plate. Um, I think that this uh, duet, like it really ended well, um, slowly, but surely. Aurora is able to build a connection with Aiden due to Elsa. So I loved that, like, kind of, like, good, where she was also building a relationship with Aiden, but also with um, helping mend the relationship between Jonathan and, you know, Aiden and his, like, nephew. So I really enjoyed that. Um, her and Elsa kind of become friends. And, you know, Aurora has to go through a lot with what happened with her father, being blamed by the, like, victim's families for what her father did. Um, she does end up going to the prison to visit him. And it's like, you know, he's kind of saying somebody, she thought it was kind of him messing with her. And he's saying, somebody has it out for me and you're in danger. Um, and so that's when you kind of know, like, this isn't her father sending threats or trying to mess with her head. It's somebody else, probably one of the victims families. And so when it is revealed, you know, she thought she was kind of going crazy like her sister. And I had thought if her sister was hearing these things and now she's hearing these things, somebody was obviously trying to make her feel crazy. So it had to be somebody from Jonathan's household during that time and then now. So it wasn't totally like out of left field when you find out who the bad guys are and, you know, that was, but I, I enjoyed it. I still thought it was a good conclusion. Um, I really loved Jonathan and Aurora's connection and how she really opened him up, him up to feeling something deeper than he ever really has. And I enjoyed it. Like I gave this one, Rise of a Queen, five stars. Um, very spicy. You know, Jonathan does enjoy his pain with his pleasure and I really loved it. So I'm sorry, you guys, I'm not giving you a big more explaining everything that happened in the final parts of this book, but it's been a couple of weeks and I still hadn't edited this. So I'm doing the best I can. I'm so sorry about this, but I did want to get this video up. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you can, um, please like comment, um, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you on the next vlog. Mm -hmm.